Assalamu alaikum, my name is Ubaidullah Khan and today I will present on the topic C2 performance concepts and various benchmarks. So uh, my group weight is uh, Muhammad Chayan Rafiq. First of all, Central Processing Unit. Central Processing Unit also known as the brain of the computer. Without the uh, CPU, no function can take in the uh, on the uh, can take place in the computer system. So uh, with these new processors released, uh, basically the processor come brands are AMD and Intel, which uh, provide quality processors from the for the CPUs. And with these processors, CPU becomes more faster and more powerful. So obviously, obviously if uh, the processor will be good. The system will be more powerful, the CPU will be more powerful and uh, overall the system will uh, increase its speed and it will be more powerful. So this uh, is a simple system unit uh, which uh, where you can see power supply, there are uh, data cables, power supply cables, uh, fan, when a system gets uh, hot, uh, system heats up, uh, the case fan is used to uh, cool it down. So uh, there is a motherboard on which uh, the CPU is embedded. Uh, and uh, from uh, the CPU works like from the memory, it takes instructions and then executes it further. You know, you can also see the hard disk drives to store data and uh, battery. Now I will tell you about how a CPU works. The CPU sits in the motherboard as I told you before. So all the hardware components and program storage system must pass data to the CPU. This means that without uh, going through the CPU, Without going through the CPU, a system cannot work. All the functions will take place by going through the CPU. When a function program or a piece of data is called, CPU pulls it from the random access memory, which means the CPU gets instructions from the memory, decodes it, decodes it uh, like it wants to know if uh, what function it will perform, then uh, it will further perform that action in the execute cycle. So that's how a CPU works uh, from fetch, decode, and execute, which is a simple basic function of a CPU. CPU performance concepts. The performance or speed of a processor depends upon uh, depends upon many other factors like instructions per clock and clock rate, and also uh, which uh, together they form into instructions per second that the CPU performs. So processing performance can also be increased. They, it can be increased by using multiple processors. Multiple processors are basically they uh, they are plugged in. Uh, a single core processor is already there in the integrated uh, IC. Uh, so uh, to make it multi-core, uh, two or more individual processors are added to the IC. So increasing the number of uh, cores in a processor, it can increase the workload that the CPU can perform. A uh, processor can now handle numerous asynchronous events and interrupts, which can take a toll on the CPU when overwhelmed. This means that uh, a CPU, for example, if uh, there is a multi-core processor CPU, uh, if a function like an interrupt is being handled, so the uh, original function of the CPU will, hand will be handled and also the interrupt of the CPU will be handled. This uh, is what a multi processor can help in. Also, if, a, if for one function, a CPU, one a single core CPU is not uh, uh, cannot work, then obviously multi processor will be used for that same function. And there is also performance counter technology of Intel brand, which tells us the usage of the various parts of CPU, like how uh, a system uh, component is being used, how much it is being used, uh, what data is it we are taking. Now the benchmarks. Benchmarks are basically tests or trials which are taken by a CPU, uh, by a, uh, a specific software uh, to test how a CPU is working. It is normally done by you know all the test program tests and stuff. Uh, benchmarking is usually associated with assessing performance. It assesses the performance characteristics of computer hardware. Uh, benchmarks are designed to mimic a particular type of workload on a component. It mimics, uh, which means, matlab, it mimics, it uh, tells us how uh, a workload is being uh, utilized by a system. It gives the uh, architecture's ability to measure and make trade-offs. Trade-offs basically means that uh, if you sacrifice something for a greater good, like uh, if you uh, reduce one component and make it uh, good, uh, it uh, might be better for some other component you may put in the system. Uh, make trade-offs in micro architectural decisions. These are the types of benchmarks. Real program benchmark, real program benchmark, uh, Test the program you have created by your own user. By the user it be, uh, created, the program is being tested through this uh, software. Component benchmark, it tests the CPU, uh, component of a CPU, it tests that. And kernel benchmark basically tests the OS, the operating system of the uh, system, computer system. Synthetic benchmarks are basically the application systems or the application programs you have created. Uh, the, this benchmark tests uh, those components. Input output devices uh, benchmarks test the input output see it, uh, it tests the input output devices. Database benchmarks test the data, data, data base management system benchmarks uh, the, the program.
database uh, it also it will test the uh, database of a particular system parallel benchmarks parallel benchmarks are basically they test uh, really high multi core supercomputers uh, these are used to test uh, those supercomputers uh, known as parallel benchmarks uh, these are some benchmark softwares uh, uh, user benchmark software performance test evaluation version these are some uh, softwares to test some particular programs so you can see processor graphics fixed drive memory usb drive you select one and then you run the program so it uh, tests the particular uh, component similarly here you can see there is a name of a uh, processor intel core i5 uh, it will uh, test the particular uh, uh, particular components of this uh, uh, system uh, of the processor uh, process in which this processor is embedded that's all thank you uh, and uh, allah